There are areas within the throat that we can't see and access directly without moving everything out, taking apart the structural anatomy, your jaw, your throat muscles, and sort of seeing into the throat. What trans robotic surgery allows us to do is put surgical instruments down in the back of the throat that allow us to operate behind where we can see beyond line of sight. And in that it requires a combination of a sort of like a video game tower I sit at where I'm looking through a three dimensional screen and I'm controlling these robotic arms and my movements get translated to the actual robot at the bedside and it's able to articulate and move in the same ways that my hands move. So it allows me to simulate like, what if I could put my hands back there and really turn and move, but knowing that I don't have the space to do that naturally. And so robotic surgery allows us that access, but maintenance of movement to operate on areas that you can't see by line of sight. And so it allows us to be more conservative in what we take apart and more, and more fine motor skill in areas that we otherwise wouldn't have with our current exposure. If you look back historically, so say 20 years ago, uh, if you're looking at an operative um, picture, you're looking at literally splitting somebody's jaw and disarticulating the jaw, the muscles, and basically opening everything out until you get to the throat. And so the analogy I give to my patients a lot is when you go to get your kitchen redone, you don't have them take out the outside walls to your house to do the work. That would be ridiculous because that would you would lose all the structural support to your house and you'd have issues. So what do you do? You open the door, you go inside, you do the work on the inside, you pull things out and you close the door. And so transverse robotic surgery is that. We don't want to take down the jaw and the muscles because once you operate on a jawbone or a muscle, it never moves the same. And so you don't want to take away all those complex muscular slings that are involved with speech and swallowing, which is a complex sort of coordinated process. If you can bypass all that, leave that all in place, then patients can recover faster and probably get back to the baseline better. And so that's sort of the analogy I typically give patients. Like many other surgical techniques, the more you do of something, you just are, are just more fluid at it. And not only that, your team is better at it. And so uh, whether it be doing a heart transplant, you wanna go to the person that does it 100 times a year and not the one that does it once because not only does that provider have a skill set to handle something but their whole team understands the process of how to do it and so we've been doing this now for 15 years my team understands the equipment i need and i'm also able to handle both the straightforward case but also when there is a surprise and what we don't want is to have somebody have a surprise and then you don't have the ability to flex beyond what you expected and so multiple iterations, I've seen multiple different ways that tumors present that I have not only my standard approach, but also my plan A and my plan B and my plan C to kind of address those issues. So what sort of sets UNC apart as far as what we bring to the table is, again, we've been doing this for an extended period of time, for, for about 15 years here at UNC. We have an experience with both managing both uh, the HPV positive population, which we may talk about, as well as the HPV negative population. We have the ability to um, flex the robots uh, for different areas within the throat. We have a pediatric program. That's probably one of the oldest pediatric robotic programs that uh, is, runs here. And then the last thing is we were one of the first programs, I think the first program to combine transoral robotic surgery with immunotherapy and try to see if we could reduce uh, patient harm. And so that first clinical trial, which was started in 2011, which was the first one in the country and has since been published and now has five year mature results, showed that we took a population of patients that almost all of them would be guaranteed radiation. And with the combination of induction therapy and then robotic surgery on top of that, 75% of those patients avoided radiation and all of them survived. And so I think we were the first ones to kind of say, how do we merge robotics and other therapies and really take it to the next level?